Hi people, welcome to Blue K Jazz Dance in the Blue Lab. This is my space people all over the world. Japan, Europe, America, Russia, whatever. What I've got to say today is very important. I'm a culture heritage teacher, I'm a qualified arts manager, administrator and business manager. I'm a black arts and education specialist. A lot of my work I've done is been shaped to raise the integrity and service and excellence around my art. Now I did that with African, I did African drumming, Brazilian, Caribbean, I studied all that to understand my blue UK jazz dance. You have to know this. Just many people, listen to me very carefully in this room, this is a very important talk. And it's for all those who are involved in UK jazz dance. I want you to stop and think, how much do you know about the culture and who's educated you? I tell you now, a sin has been done in Russia, Japan, Korea, United States, in Europe. What you've done as dancers, you've learned the dance, but you never learned the cultural heritage behind the dance. Just because you dance, does it mean you know the customs? Do you know the customs behind it? North, South and East and West. I need to tell you, the dancers themselves in Britain don't know it themselves. Because they got miseducated. And what happens when you're miseducated, you just pass it on. Because you don't ask the right questions. You should know the background to the dancers who have taught you. They've not taught you. So example, my DNA, my father is Jamaican. And you need to know the era that they're born in. My dad was born in 1935 in Jamaica. You need to know the history of their slavery, what happened there, revolts, everything. You know what it's like to live in the country and what it was like at that time. My mum was born in 42, so my dad's born in Jamaica here, Cuba's here. My granddaddy worked in Cuba in the 1900s, okay? My mum, down here, near Trinidad and Tobago, a place called Grenada, G-R-E-N-A-D-A. -E she was born in 1942. What's the similarity? My dad was born in, saw the war. My mum, on the back end of the war, she saw. Then they came into the 50s, which was a big change, where big bands were lost. Do you know what I'm saying? Etc, etc. Boom, you understand? Right. The 50s brought in a new way of thinking and learning. And my dad and parents were the young generation of that period this knowledge you need to know because I come with their DNA their knowledge about dance about arts and culture and what they came into the world to do they came with a purpose they came with a purpose to leave their countries to look after their families so my family my dad's family is from a family of 12 12 people Everybody couldn't go to school, so my dad had to, couldn't go to high, into higher education college, okay? He couldn't go to secondary school. He did primary, but he couldn't go to secondary because he had to leave to work on the land. My parents come from agricultural farming. They own land. They're very business-minded. They use the land, okay? They didn't get an education. Both my parents got special education needs. How much knowledge have I given you just there, just in the five minutes? I grew up as a special educationist child. I gravitated to cultural, creative, leadership activities through my parents. Because my parents wanted me to have pride for the Jamaican culture and the Grenadian culture and the African culture and the African diaspora culture. Do you understand what I'm saying this wrong? Why? To give me a firm sense of belonging as a smaller group. This is our group and this is the whole of Britain. And the whole of Britain was... Jamming down racism into us, miseducating at school, and in the Caribbean islands that were. In 1962, boom, Jamaica got its independence. And it started to celebrate its traditional culture more than any time because people need to know their cultures were banned under colonialization, some of it, yeah? Certain so drumming and everything. My mum's culture, 1974, they got their independence. So in the household, in every year, 62, Jamaican independence, my dad would celebrate. My mum would. My dad was in America from 55 to 61. He told me stories about being in America. He told me stories about his dad being in Cuba. My mum was never left their country. She came here at 17. 
the storytelling I had was no Three Little Pigs and all that. I got stories from Jamaica, stories from Grenada. Have you got that? My dad was a top social urban dancer. If you, talk, if you call him a freestyle dancer, he was that. Top one, underground. And he danced in America and Jamaica. He saw a dance hall. So was my mother. They danced to jazz. Because jazz was seen as a refined thing. So in the schools, you'd have balls. They'd have a dance hall and people go and have a band. And they would dance jazz. Our parents danced to jazz. Now what happened? No one's told you this. Think about who are the key people. And I'm saying this to Japan. And I'm saying this to Korea. I'm saying this to Russia. I'm saying this to America. I'm saying to all the people, even in the UK, who are learning UK jazz dance. What do you know about the history of the dancers, the pioneers? Nothing. Because that information doesn't exist. Because the Western writers made sure you don't know it. Who mainly been the DJs. To put themselves at the forefront of the culture of UK jazz dance. They don't dance. They don't run a school. So how can they be at the forefront of the dance? Don't you understand? The basic analysis. I went back to university to make people understand. I'm a qualified arts man and administrator. I learned analysis. I've got honours in research. When you're researching, you must ask certain questions. The DJs don't run dance schools, so how can they be then at the forefront of UK jazz dance culture? It has to be the pioneers like me. I'm the last dancer. I'm the longest freestyle dancer in Manchester. Do you understand? I was born in 1964. Nobody's dancing. I'm doing hip-hop longer than hip-hop dancers. I've been doing house dance with our house. was totally different to the United States. Because of discrimination and prejudices, no one documented it. And if people documented it, what they've done, they've hid it. So we have something in Britain called, all over the world, we have something called hidden history. There's documents that are hidden in the vaults of universities, libraries and people's archives. So you can't see the culture of UK jazz dance. People have written it out. They don't live the culture. The key book, that writer, does not know the culture. He put us all in a Dutch pot. So, say for example, I went to a debate and I was, I was upset. You know why? Because the dancers never identified where they came from. What island are you from? Because one thing, your DNA. You dance to music different to me. I'm Jamaican Grenada. Where you come from? Trinidad. Barbados. Cuba, there's Cuban people in Britain that came here. They were here in the war and they came after the war. Not being acknowledged. It's like, oh, we've got the Cuban music came separate. No, the Cubans were. I'm from the West Indies. I'm not Cubans, the biggest island in Cuba. I come from there. So when you talk to the West Indies, people associate everybody with Jamaican. You need to understand I'm Jamaican and I hear people. Wait, hold on. No, he's Barbadian, I can tell. By his accent, can't you tell? No, he's Jamaican. Or oh, he's African even. He's from Nigeria. People, when I come, you need to understand. You've done sins. People in Japan are teaching children UK jazz dance. Dance is a PhD subject and please start to study it. This is, the, this is what I'm saying to individuals. Seek to find the information from the dancers that you've learned information from, please. Because when I come with my company, you need to understand. The individual's not done that, you perpetuate racism in the society. You perpetuate people to look down on us. Because they're going to say it's got no academic to it, no academia to it. There's no form to it, there's no substance to what you're doing. It's just something that you do century, and most importantly, what's been advertised by the Western DJ and even some of our own dancers, photographers and writers that this is a macho art form. It's not. And there's a reason why males have seem to be doing it. You don't know the answer. I do. I'm not going to give you that. But people have taken it on. But if you look up, in the West Indies, we have the most dances where females and males get together. Where would a male tell another woman in the Caribbean, you can't dance? You show me where that happens. I mean, I'm dumbfounded when DJs and even our own dancers talk about what it's a male. No, it's not a male thing. Because our art form never happened in isolation. 
and you need to know the difference between North and South and East and West and you need to know about racism in Britain why the black woman couldn't travel and why men had to travel in packs was because of racism 1958 during the war blacks were killed by the British and by the Americans okay post the war the African diaspora male was being threatened by the society at large and was killed for a man, for example, in Nottingham, where the Nottingham riots happened in 1958, for a man to go out and get a packet of cigarettes, he had to bring 10 men with him so he wouldn't be attacked by teddy boys. Are you going to let the woman walk in the street? So where the men went, remember where jazz was, it was in places that were like dingy places, dark underground places. Women, would you let a woman go there? So understand where some of the places where the man danced. So for example, the guys in Fusion, they went to dingy places. Do you understand? Which were dangerous to get there and dangerous to get home. Our parents would kill us if I took my sister to some places I went. Because my dad knows, son, you took your sister there. You know it's dangerous to get there and get home. You want, I wouldn't, couldn't bring her. But my sister, oh, let me go with you. I can't. That'll kill me. Mum will kill me. Because I know I have to go for a no-go area. They're the things that the Western DJ, the writers are not telling you about. And there were the individuals out there perpetuating negatives about us. Just like the African Americans. Think for yourself. But you haven't. And people not spoke up. You must have intelligence. Going to university, what is it about? Being an independent thinker. You're supposed to be jazz. Be you in Japan. Be you in Korea. Be you in Russia. Be you in America. If you're doing this dance... And you're not using an independent thinker. How can I respect you? How can I say you as an individual engaging in this art form, respect, integrity, service, and excellence of my culture? Believe me, if I learn Japanese culture, I learn everything. I want to know. I want to know your mother because I know about early learning. Dance starts from a social, oral culture. It has to come from someone. Who does it come from? Grandparents and the mother and father. First, you didn't just make it up like that. You realise, the child realises... When he sees his Caribbean culture, that these dances were here before, and no one's asked that. We never just suddenly started dancing jazz in Britain. My dad danced to jazz. My grandfather danced to jazz. My aunties and uncles danced to jazz. We weren't the first to dance to jazz. We danced in a different way, though, because the society was different. Different environment. Blue UK jazz dance, it hurts me, because when my company comes... Please do what you've got to do. Be an independent thinker. Don't be in jazz. And let me come to Japan and let me speak. Because my work is about real talk now. And rethinking and reclaiming the dignity of my people internationally. And I don't mess about. Because people are dead. People are threatening me. Over what? Because they don't want my legacy to come to the table. Because it will refute the information the DJs have done us wrong. They knew about black dog policy. They tried to kill the dance Japanese. You don't understand. And they tried to pretend that they wanted individuals. They wanted to control how we dance in a club. Wait, hold on. How far are you going to go, Bridget? I had slavery and colonialization. And now you want to tell me how to dance in a club with my crew and my family? So what was the dance? The dance was a dance of resistance to oppression in the club system. All our dances were... Don't you understand? Don't you understand? Be you Japan or Korean, Russian, English or American, French, Dominican. Our dances from the West Indies have not be, all been resistance to fighting oppression. Because the wider cultures wanted to stop us self-expressing ourselves. The males particularly. And the females, and then what they did, they wrote out the female as having nothing to do with it. So they'll put, it's just a man thing. But what are you talking about? I learned dancing. I've danced with a whole bag of women. You think that we could have learned jazz dancing and ballet and contemporary? It was the women that taught us. Because my cousin was going to class. My cousin lived in our house. She's a female. She learned tap. I said, show me a little bit of that. She learned ballet. Oh, show me a little bit of that. She learned modern. Show me a little bit of that. She learned piano, show me a bit of that. That's how the jazz musicians in America, same thing. But what happened, they marketed jazz mainly at males. Do you understand? And wrote the women out. 
The jazz musicians are going to the women because they know harmony was a, a big middle class. All you have to think about Harlem Renaissance. Think about the Harlem Renaissance people all over the world. The women were exceptionally gifted musicians and the musicians, the men who work in the streets didn't know nothing about the horn. They would have to go to the women because they knew about harmony. And then what happened was the Western elite privilege wrote the African diaspora movement out of history of jazz. Look it upon the net. Why should I be telling you this? And you should be saying it. You should be ashamed. And I say that. When I come with my company, people, I don't make jokes. I've come to raise my father's name, my mother's name, because they put something in me called pride. Pride for who you are. Pride for what you've done. Pride for what you achieved. I've contributed to UK Jazz Dance and I was written out of the history. That's why I'm coming back. I came second in the second National Jazz Championship in Bristol. Look in Snowboy's book. Am I in it? And none of the people, my crew, the people I danced with, Christopher Hibbert, Derek Talk, Body Function, Tuba Jazz Dancers, free, you know how many crews I set up? None of them are in there. But I've got the archive and people are trying to stop this archive coming to the table. But it's going to refute what Snowboy writes. Snowboy does not put the cultural heritage, cultural heritage into the book. As he does that, he reinforces negative stereotypes about pioneers, about UK jazz dance and their culture, their mother and father, that there's no women in it, the fathers and mothers got nothing to do with it, the DJ, listen, this is my home. Look at my home. I'm going to show you the rest of it and what I did as one person. So I'm doing an exhibition, just one person. I dance north, south, east and west of the globe, people. You don't know about me and you don't know about a lot of dancers. They left the UK and set up dance schools in Europe. Went to Africa and Caribbean, set up the schools. Because of the Western DJ, because of the Western privilege, negative thinking, bad spirit, there's good people. But sorry, right now, it's just bad spirit people doing things with my culture, and I'm coming with real talk. Directly in your face, be it Snowboy, Colin Curtis, Bob Jones. Do you know what I'm saying? Think about, when did them DJs talk about black dog policy? When did they talk about racism? Because you can't talk about jazz. You know in Japan, you can't talk about jazz and not talk about racism. Well, my art form's called UK Jazz Dance. Jazz 